Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the designer and architect of the Maximo BI Tools. This is part two in a series of demo recordings on combining the powerful capabilities of Maximo with Cognos. This series is specific to the Maximo Cognos metadata and how we can capitalize on Maximo's integration framework to streamline the creation and maintenance of the metadata. In part one, we created a simple report object structure in Maximo's object structure application. And in today's series, we're going to look in more detail at the max relationships used within the report object structures and their surrounding business rules. So to do that, let's take a recap or a review of what we've done so far. We started in Maximo and again we created a simple ROS, a report object structure. A report object structure is a hierarchy of related objects joined together by SQL max relationships. We created a parent of asset with two child objects of work order and companies. Well, let's look at how these individual objects are joined together. If we look in detail at the asset work order objects, the key here is the SQL statement that brings the two objects together. That's called the max relationship. And as we define that report object structure, this is the SQL or the max relationship that we selected. So again, that's a very important point is how we join these two objects together. When we join these two objects together, it's also very important to note that we're only bringing in the persistent attributes. Any non-persistent attributes or fields that Maximo may calculate are not passed to any reporting tool, whether it's BERT or Cognos or Crystal, everything is based for reporting on the persistent attributes that exist within the database. Well, in th this example, it's a very simple join between these two tables, attribute to attribute. But in many cases, as we get into other object relationships, the type of SQL that is available can expand exponentially. So what we've done in 7.6 is we've extended the type of relationships that we support out of the box. Before 7.6, we can su support those simple relationships, but now we've extended it. A couple of key points or extensions that we've made is that we can now support max relationships or SQL statements that contain an or, that maybe they create some sort of greater than or less than symbol. We can also support brackets, something that we never had before, and null values. Well, what do I mean by support? Well, by support, we can always add those relationships in the integration object structure application, but we went to publish those to Cognos, it would fail. So again, now in 7.6, we've extended the types of relationships you can have. All these are now supported, so when you go to publish them, they will not fail anymore. And additionally, here's an example of a specific delivered report object structure, asset activity, that we were previously unable to support prior to 7.6. And again, because now we support things like null values and or statements and brackets, these relationships are supported in 7.6. I just again want to highlight on the bottom here that there are still some max relationships that we do not support in our integration. When we start to get in very complex subselects or where we see in statements, you can see a, a number of these points in this example below, these cannot be directly published to Cognos. But what happens if you still needed to use that relationship? Well, there's a couple of different things you could do. You could open up the published report object structure in Cognos Framework Manager and then add this relationship directly in Cognos FM. Or likewise, you could create a new object structure relationship in Maximo DB Config or Database Config that may be specific for your report object structure and may not contain these complex values. 
So let's switch over and see what this looks like in Maximo and take a little bit more um, uh, demo portion of this so you can see exactly what we're looking at. So again, here I'm in the object structure application. Let me bring up the report object structure that we had created. I love utilizing this um, qu save query that I had. And we called it a demo, so here it is right here. And let's bring it up and let's look at what we have. Again, this is our hierarchy, I'll select it over here, asset work order and companies. Let's look at that relationship again that we have today for, whoops, I went a little bit too fast there, um, work order. So we joined asset to work order on the all woe relationship. Well, what am I talking about with these complex relationships that I had mentioned? Well, let's come down and let's add a new row. And let's say that we want to go to a um, object called a measure point. This is where I might take um, meter readings, right? And when I take my meter readings for a particular asset, I may want to create a report based on those meter readings. So what is my parent object in this case? It's asset. What does my relationship look like? Well, when I look at the relationship, here's an example of one of the complex ones that I need. I need this one here, not just the measurement point all. And as I look at this and evaluate the relationship, look how complex it starts to get. There's my subselect that I mentioned. So let's grab that and let's save it. <coughs> Excuse me. And now what's going to happen when I try to publish this to Cognos, I'm going to select this publish as Cognos package action. It's going to evaluate all my SQL relationships and it's going to say, okay, can I pass those in a format that Cognos will understand? And in this case, it's giving me an error. It's saying I can't publish it because it contains a relationship that Cognos again can't process. So I have to remove this value. And I could do two different things. I Well, actually, I could do three different things. I could come over and I could select that simple relationship. And then when I get into Cognos, specifically in the FM tool, I could modify that relationship directly in FM to get the finite relationship that I need. Or I could potentially look at my relationship in dbconfig and change it. So now let me just quickly save this. And now if I go to publish my Cognos package, it's going to be OK. It's going to be able to accept that simple relationship that I have. So again, I can't get into those very complex level of relationships um, directly here into the object structure application. If I have a relationship that has those multiple subselects, it will fail. So as I'm waiting for this to go ahead and process, uh, it'll just take a minute. Now, again, because it was that simple relationship, it published correctly to Cognos. So let me highlight those two other things that I mentioned. Again, here's database config. If I needed to make a new relationship to bring over my measurement point, I could come in here, click on the relationship tab, and this is a listing of all relationships between assets and child objects. And I could come down here and create new row. And then I would go ahead and define what my exact SQL relationship is between asset and measurement point in a simpler format that could pass directly over to Cognos. So that's one option for you. And then as we go through the, um, the rest of the series, I'll get into the Cognos FM tool and you can see where those relationships are available. I'm not going to save this at that point. The other thing that I quickly wanted to highlight here is um, where you can find more information about all these different max relationships and the business rules that we have. If you come over and you search on Google, it's always the best place to do a search to find Maximo report related information, just do a quick search, Maximo 76 Cognos Guide. And one of the first guides you're going to see over here is this Cognos Feature Guide. Cognos Feature Guide gets into more details about the business rules and I've opened up a copy here. And now come in the guide and just do a quick, whoops, wrong, uh, wrong search. Um, 
do a search on business rules. So I'll go a search on business rules, go down here to page uh, 42. Uh, let me just go there instead, it'll be quicker. Sorry, I don't mean to do that. And now this is going to take you step by step and again give you the text and the screenshots that explains the business rules why are related to creating a report object structure. Excuse me. So you're going to see some things like when you join them together, there has to be a relationship. There might be an old or obsolete relationship someplace in, in the Maximo da database that has no SQL. So we can't join anything together, so Cognos doesn't know what to do. So again, we, we can't um, utilize those type of relationships. And then I just want to scroll down here a little bit more. Here's again some examples that I mentioned of the newer type of relationships that we now support. So you're going to see a greater amount of relationships um, in 7.6. But in, there are still some cases where you are going to find that um, with the very complex relationships that they're not supported. And you can find some again that information here in the Maximo 7.6 uh, Cognos Feature Guide. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time.